A parametric equalizer is a piece of software or a device that lets you adjust the volume of any frequency range you desire. A parametric equalizer consists of parametric filters, for example, low pass, peak or notch filters. How to design these filters? How to implement them in code? In this video, I will show you four simple steps you can follow to build every possible parametric filter. Hi everyone, this is Jan Wilczek from TheWolfSound.com and if you're new to this channel, I teach you how to process sound using self-written software. In the previous video, we discussed all musically useful parametric filter types. In this video, I'll be showing you how to fully design and implement a parametric equalizer plugin. So by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what to do if you want to build a parametric filter, even if it's just for a university or a hobby project. Here's an example of a parametric equalizer. You can hear that I can boost or cut entire frequency ranges. Each of these dots represents a parametric filter. This video shows you a procedure how to design each and every one of them. But first, let's ask ourselves a question. What do we need our plugin to do? If you come from the digital signal processing background, you may be familiar with finite impulse response, FIR filters, or infinite impulse response, IAR filters. You know that there are dozens of methods to create both of these filter types. But in the context of audio plugins, our filters need to have three specific properties. First of all, they need to have meaningful controls. For example, a low pass filter has a cutoff frequency or a resonance parameter, which are understandable even to people untrained in audio. As opposed to that, if I gave you direct control over filter coefficients, for example, A1 or A2 or B1, you probably wouldn't know what to do with them. Well, neither would I. The filters need to be computationally efficient. This means that we'll usually favor IIR filters. There's an additional reason for this. The controls to coefficients mapping must be fast as well. Let's imagine if we were to design the transfer function and derive the impulse response of an FIR filter every time we turn the knob on our plugin's interface, we wouldn't be able to do that in real time. Our filters need to be stable for any meaningful parameter setup. In other words, if we turn a knob, we must be sure that the output of our plugin won't exceed a certain value range. It is typically achieved through using so-called analog prototypes, which I will cover shortly. Now that we know what is important for a musically useful filter plugin, we may cover the four steps necessary to design it. These four steps are Decide on the filter type Design an analog prototype Digitize the analog prototype using the bilinear transform. Implement the digital filter in code. There's one additional step that I encourage you to do now that will allow you to excel at all your programming in general, which is subscribing to Wolf Sound's YouTube channel. If you haven't done that already, please do it now by clicking on the subscribe button underneath the video. Thank you. Each and every subscriber makes me want to do more articles and videos so that you can enjoy the beauty of audio programming. Let's now discuss each of the four steps in more detail. The first step is to decide on the filter type you want to implement. As a recap, the musically useful parametric filter types are low pass, high pass, high shelving, low shelving, band pass, notch and peak filters. If you want to learn more about them, then I highly encourage you to check out the previous video on parametric filter types. I have linked to it in the description below. Now that you know the parametric filter types, you may decide on which of them you want to implement. Even if you want to implement them all, start with just one. Do you have it? Great, then it's time for step two, designing an analog prototype. 
Using an analog filter ensures that we have a meaningful controls to coefficients mapping and we obtain a computationally efficient and stable IIR filter. In order to design an analog prototype for the desired filter type, we need to turn to analog filter design theory. Without going into much detail, there are four main classes of analog filter design. Bessel, Butterworth, Chebyshev and elliptic functions. Each of them is optimal in some sense. Using these, we can construct any of the parametric filters in the analog domain. The output of these procedures is a transfer function in the Laplace, also called the S domain. Here is an example of a transfer function of the first order analog Butterworth low pass. The third step to implement a parametric filter plugin is to digitize the analog prototype. Again, there are many ways to do it. But the one most used in practice is the bilinear transform, also called Tustin's method. In the bilinear transform, the analog frequencies of the J omega analog frequency axis in the S plane are mapped to the digital frequencies of the unit circle of the Z plane. It sounds complicated, I know, and frankly it is, but fortunately there are ready made formulas that we can use. You can make these substitutions in your analog transfer functions and voila, you have a digital filter. For example, applying these formulas to the analog low pass filter I showed you before yields this after digitization. There is one trick that allows us to shortcut steps 2 and 3 so to obtain readily digitized formulas for the desired filters. The so-called RBJ cookbook, compiled by Robert Bristow Johnson, lists all musically useful parametric filters in their digitized form so that you don't have to derive them all over again. I have linked to the RBJ cookbook in the full article, the link to which you can find in the description below. Nevertheless, I still believe it is incredibly important to understand the process that stands behind these formulas in order to use them to their full capability and be able to extend them if necessary. The last step in this process is to take that digital filter and implement it in the technology of your choice. Sample technologies may be Python, MATLAB, CSound, Pure Data, Android, iOS, Arduino, Raspberry Pi or Juice. The last option may seem the most obvious to DAW plugin developers. That is why, over the course of the following videos, I will be showing how to implement each and every one of the mentioned parametric filters in the Juice C framework. So stay tuned. So, where can these parametric filters be applied? One obvious answer is a digital audio workstation. In this software, you can use parametric EQ plugins to manipulate the frequency content of your audio tracks. Using these parametric filters, you can remove unwanted tones, wideband noise, and add coloration to that timbre. However, that's not the only use. Efficient filters are especially important in game audio, virtual reality, or in a broader sense, any sound design scenario. In any virtual setting, the system must be able to dynamically control user's environment. So to be able to quickly respond to changes in user movements so that they reflect, uh, they are reflected in changes to sound. One example could be when a player finds themselves behind a curtain. The sounds coming from behind the curtain should sound muffled, what can be achieved using a low pass or a high shelving filter. A similar effect may be applied when the player finds themselves underwater. In summary, in this video I have shown you four steps to create a filter plugin, from the idea to the implementation. 
I have also showed you the shortcut in the form of the RBJ cookbook. Over the next couple of videos I'll discuss each of these steps in more detail so that you can understand fully this process. What will follow is a series of Juice C++ plugin design tutorials in which I will show how to implement each of the mesh parametric filters. If you want to be notified when the mentioned videos are published, please subscribe to the Wolfsong channel and turn on notifications. As usual, I have put the content of this video in an article form over at thewolfsound.com and I have linked to it in the description below so that you can bookmark it for future reference. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Take care.